Hello, welcome to the Rich Chinese Little Square Theatre podcast. Uh, I am in bed, I am still a bit ill, but I have to keep working. That is the life of the comedian. It's the hardest job in the world. Also, all my hair's fallen off. What do you think? Not sure. Um, you know, I'm start, look at this. I'm starting to go a little bit grey. Uh, anyway, today's guest is Lucy Porter. If you enjoy these, why not come and see me live? There's lots of opportunities coming up. We have... Um, uh, um, the Leicester Comedy Festival on Wednesday the 8th of February, if you see this in time, uh, there are some tickets for that left, and I'm up against a comedian called Stuart Lee, who's on at the same time. It would be great if I could sell more tickets than him, but I won't. Uh, and on the Sunday the 12th of February is the final As It Occurs To Me, which I'm attempting to write from my sickbed, uh, and the 16th, 17th and 18th of February, I'm back at the Leicester Square Theatre doing my best show which is also the one I'm doing in Leicester 19th February in Bury St Edmunds and then it goes on go to richherring.com slash gigs or richherring.com slash the underscore best slash tour and you can see all about that or go to leicestersquaretheatre.com to buy tickets for as it occurs to me or for the best or if you're really keen you can buy it for the next series of Rehearsed but Rehearsed but it's not saying that you people over there which starts uh, in June, and the first one's already sold 84 tickets, which is insane. So, and we don't even know who's on. Anyway, let's sit back and relax and enjoy Richard Hang. Oh, I'm just going to go to... Oh. If I die, do then please watch this programme and enjoy it. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who this morning woke up with a mysterious round mark on his wrist that he could not explain. He wasn't even drunk last night. It's Richard Herring! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I was down at the uh, house where the, uh, the apprentice candidates uh, hang out. <laughs> they call it Rahalastapa there, I think they say. <laughs> they call it the process of Rahalastapa. That's, that's what they call it. I'm just going to get into this camera because I want to show the people at home my mysterious uh, marking that has appeared. That's weird when you wait. It doesn't hurt. Can you see that? I'll, I'll see if you can see it. Hold on. People at home won't be able to hear that. Can you see that there? That doesn't hurt. I didn't get uh, drunk last night. I had like, well, I got a bit drunk, didn't I? <laughs> but I didn't get that drunk. And I, it does, look at that, people at home. Ooh, look how astonished and disgusted. What do you think that is? Ringworm. Is it? <laughs> That's good. I want it kind of, it's like, it looks like a bruise. Is that what a ringworm does? No. <laughs> Come here then, mate. Just, Come here. Or James Herriot. There you go. <laughs> And you have to stick your hand up my ass to you to, to work out what... It's a very mysterious thing. I think I might have been abducted by aliens. That's odd, isn't it, when you wake up and it marks on you and you don't know where that's from. It makes me wonder if I just have blacked out and who knows what's been going on in my life. Uh, that's my excuse if my wife finds anything out. So uh, I, uh, the news that's come up, I don't know if... Um, the, the, by the time people at home, uh, all sorts of things might have happened in this particular story, but uh, you may remember CJ uh, from Eggheads. <laughs> wrote an autobiography in which he admitted that he thought he'd killed someone in Amsterdam by kicking them into a canal 20 years ago. Uh, and then a year later, after that was published, the police got round to investigating it and he was arrested for murder, because that he'd admitted. Uh, and then he was let go, because they they'd done the wrong forms or something, and they didn't have enough... It wasn't enough evidence, and I think they thought he was making it up, which is what I think. But now CJ from Eggheads is suing the police for the wrongful arrest of... That's quite a... That's quite a scam to have pulled off, isn't it, for CJ from Eggheads. He's admitted killing someone, then been arrested for it, and then is suing the police for the crime that he made up himself. It's quite... I have to say, I'm very impressed by CJ from Eggheads. And I, you know, I'm slightly worried about him suing me for all the things I just said then. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough, CJ from Eggheads. Uh, and what else? This week I've been... Um, Filming a, uh, a for as it occurs to me, which should be out very soon, a Artema, some people call it, and it's um, uh, I've been uh, doing I did five sketches of a series of six 
uh, which were about me having sex with a robot made out of toasters. So that's been quite an, <laughs> that's been quite an unusual week for me. Uh, there was one episode of it that involves my daughter coming in with my wife and seeing me having sex with a toaster robot and then being disgusted. So I had to, my daughter, <laughs> I wasn't actually having sex with the, it was that we were acting. Uh, but my, my daughter came in and uh, to make her feel more comfortable, I uh, let her come and meet the robot because I was worried she'd be scared of it. She came in, she wasn't scared, she loved it. It had like these two funnels on for breasts, upside down funnels, and my daughter just immediately went. So, you know, she's take, she takes after me. That is the girl, the, I don't know if that's gonna mentally scar her. She seemed to enjoy it at the time, but I just wonder if she'll be with a therapist in 20 years time going, yeah, my dad made me watch him have sex with a load of toasters staple. Is that, has that happened to anybody else? So I can go, no, okay. And uh, I'd like to say hello to Matthew Payne, who's, uh, there he is, he's the uh, VIP guest there. He's put his hat on for a second. Thank you, he's uh, paid extra money. He may ask a question. You shout out if I forget, you can ask a question. Uh, to Lucy Port uh, later on. You're drinking the fine. It cost uh, 19 pounds the champagne today, which is uh, the second most expensive bottle of champagne that uh, I've given to VIP guests. So that's you know usually it saves, but you can get one for 15. I got one from Waitrose for 13 the other week. So that is 19 pounds you've had there. <laughs> which, given how much you paid for the tickets, might seem. And the hats, uh, 20. P I gave you two hats. That's 40 p. I've given you in, in hats. Because it's the end of the series, nearly. I've kind of splashed out. Anyway, I sense that people aren't as interested in this as I am. So I will... If anyone, ha if anyone has any uh, theories about that strain... At home, if anyone knows what that is. You've seen it up close. I may, by the time this comes out, I may be dead. It might be like... It could be like in Game of Thrones, couldn't it? That's just the beginning of the... Whatever that stuff. What's that called? Nerds? You know. When they get gets that disease. Then Ian Glenn gets that disease and goes... What's it called? Grayscale. Grayscale. It could be that, couldn't it? Could be pink scale. Uh, so um, let's crack on. Bruise scale. It's not some kind of weird bruise from. I wonder what I did. Anyway, please well, sit back and welcome uh, a woman who is probably best known for her appearance on Clive Dunn, a tribute. <laughs> that's, where, that's where we know her from. It's Lucy Porter, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, please welcome Lucy Porter. Lovely Lucy Porter. Hello, come in. Pull up a microphone, sit down, make yourself at home. Evening. How are you doing? I'm, I'm both honoured and humbled uh, to be in your presence. Good. Uh, <laughs> correct. That is correct. That's the correct reaction. No one has ever said that in the 132 episodes I've done so far. I get uh, excited about Clive Dunn, though. So, yeah, exactly. You know. Were you a big fan of Clive Dunn? No. <laughs> How did you end up in the tribute show to Clive? He's dead. Clive Dunn's dead, by the way. He's died twice because it came up again this year, didn't it? It came up quite recently. He died but he was surprisingly young in Dad's Army. That was the thing. He was, yeah. We all had to say on the Clive Dunn tribute programme, you had to say, even though he seemed so old, he was but a 34-year-old man when yes. he recorded that. Yeah, it was a completely shameless act of whoring on my behalf where they said did you like dad's army and i was like yeah it was all right and they said would you like 500 pounds to say that you like dad's army and i was i probably could yeah i could probably do that <laughs> but he was he was a great actor he was and he was a great singer let's make the rest of this podcast just a tribute uh, <laughs> let's just talk about our because there was a lot that Dunn. didn't go out on yeah. the channel five tribute to clive Dunn that i, I feel should have grand granddad we love you didn't he he did yeah, he, he did and i think he did some follow-up singles as well which didn't do quite so well actually it was a good one and i can't remember it but if you check it out danny baker tweeted about one of, he, had, he did a song that was quite like groovy and quite good I've got a lot of old comedians records yeah. there was a uh, there was an album called All You Are Awful yes. which had uh, Jim Dale you remember Jim Dale fantastic lyricist right. he wrote the lyrics to Georgie Girl he wrote Dicky Dum Dum Dicky Dum Dum Dicky Dum Dum Bong Dicky Dum Dum Dicky Dum Dum fantastic lyricist <laughs> 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 I listen to a lot of CBeebies theme tunes at the moment, yes. so that to me is uh, is high art. Yeah, me no, too. the Dicker Dum Dum was uh, it was all a swinging sixties. It was got to go to Piccadilly 
Piccadilly, some of the, and it was all about going yes. down the King's Road and picking up girls in go-go boots. And, and he did it. He didn't do "You Are Awful," but I like you. Kind of done that. That must have been Dick Emery. Yeah, that was Dick Emery. Yeah, okay. There was uh, Brian uh, George Roper, whatever his name was. Brian Murphy. Murphy. Well done. Um, I saw it today. I was watching. Uh, I was going to talk about this in the opening titles, but I saw uh, Danny Dyer's uh, "Who Do You Think You Are," which is fucking amazing. I mean, if you're at home, <laughs> it's just the most f- amazing. Who, I love Who Do You Think You Are. I love it. I, I love want it. to become famous just so I can be on Who Do You Think You Are. That's, that's the only thing I want from being... I could get back on TV so I can do that. And it's just the most spectacular... Well, I saw the 90-second yeah. edited package that someone had done on the internet, yeah. which was all you needed to know. Well, I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's the ju- it was the juxtaposition. He goes... Is, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's, it will have been a while now since it's been out. His family tree goes back to uh, the royal family. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. It goes, but it goes to this, arist- this, <laughs> this aristocrat uh, in Oxfordshire or somewhere, and he goes to this massive mansion. He's driving along going, this is a nice gaff. I just look at him, it's a massive look. And then he goes, he's got a fucking moat, he's got a moat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy has a drawbridge, you know. And, and so then this guy, who is whatever cousins, how many times removed of Danny Dyer, is sort of walking along with Danny Dyer. Uh, it's brilliant. It, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> the best. But Brian Murphy is in, uh, uh, is in Run For Your Wife. Which um, is, is that what it's called? The one about the taxi driver, where he's a bigamous taxi driver? The Ray Cooney. Ray yeah, Cooney that they film. Did, Denise went out. Denise went out and the girl from uh, Girls Aloud. Sarah and, Harding. Yeah, and Rolf Harris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Brian Murphy's in the trailer. <laughs> so that's, that's the reason that I, I went back to that. For so. my 40th birthday, my husband bought me uh, Run For Your Wife on DVD, that's signed by uh, Brian Ricks mm. and Vicky Michelle. Wow. Who was one of the producers of it, nice. and I love it. They're awed by Vicky Michelle there because uh, uh, it did the kind of. I think it's one of the worst. It made like twenty yeah, it pounds. Yeah, it's a terrible thing. Box it, it's worth watching the trailer of that, and then watch uh, Who Do You Think You Are, because then your your opinion of Danny Dyer will change, will spin around. <laughs> but it's well worth seeing. I can't, that's so anyway. I can't remember. What we, that was because of. That was because. There was also Brian. on that album. There was Terry Scott did a song called "I Like Birds." <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the fun- do look it up Terry's got a lot of birds all kinds of birds and it's obviously it's about birds oh. and some birds are called tits they are that's, that's good yeah <laughs> that's, I've saved you time there we go got the- <laughs> good uh, so look we used to share flats in Edinburgh a lot. Wow, didn't so we? Yeah, that's sort of all sorts. That's of what I call the wilderness years. All the tales we could tell of it. Well, it was like you met your husband in that flat. I know. And I was in that flat. That's why I was <laughs> single in that flat. You had a choice of two men. But to be honest, Sarah Kendall was there, and she was the most attractive prospect, even but though I am a straight woman. But uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, she rejected me, so yeah. I moved down the list, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Justin was next. Yeah, and then you know it yeah. could, what could have been had could he not been, been unexpectedly available. But there was like a year. There was a one. It was happened halfway through um, our three or four years. There was a, a couple of years where you weren't together. Yeah, and we shared. It took flats. you a little while to. It took you a little while to fall in love with each other. I think it was the night. The night that sealed it for me was when we did uh, kitchen karaoke. <laughs> And uh, you stripped to the waist for reasons that weren't even clear at the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and we all danced around the kitchen doing this. And uh, so I can't, it w- there was a lot of country and western songs, and yeah. there was a lot of sort of. Uh, Sarah Kendall and I did the rap from TLC's Waterfalls, as I recall. <laughs> and, um, and, and Justin being six foot five, a ridiculous height for anyone to be, um, and I'm four foot 11, and he kind of picked me up and sort of flung me around the kitchen. And uh, I thought, that's the man I'm going to marry. <laughs> and does he do that all the time still? Is that, <laughs> He's is never that done it again. Never again. <laughs> that was the promise. Maybe that's how you got him. Um, d- I Could haven't be. seen the... Is it show me? Cause you yeah, no, I tell you, I had this uh, at the Edinburgh Festival where I had mystery bruising here. Yeah. And it was because I'd been leaning on the microphone stand right. <laughs> in a kind of, sort of, you know, relaxed what I've been repetitively doing with my right hand. <laughs> 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 to make a mark, I it's all, yeah, the tales that hand could tell, could. Richard, the tales it could tell. <laughs> Would be one tale. <laughs> <laughs> quite repetitive tale. <laughs> Stretching back now, uh, 35 years. <laughs> 35, <laughs> that's... You've, 35 you've years of masturbation, yeah, I would okay. say. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 49. Okay, uh, Probably, I'd say 36, 37. <laughs> I was quite an early start. <laughs> 
I mean, I thought that seemed late yeah. for you, but... Uh... Thank you. <laughs> what a wonderful journey it has been. <laughs> um, so you're very small and your husband is very tall. Yes. Are you planning to try and breed average-sized people? Is that, <laughs> is that your plan? As a sort of experiment? It was like a medical experiment. Because, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I mean, everybody said this is kind of, you know, it's like crossing a cart horse with a Shetland pony. You yeah. know, it's, it's ambitious. And um, and then when I was pregnant, everyone was terrified for me. And you know, like normally, you sort of you get pregnant, and people are like, "Oh, that's wonderful! Congratulations!" <laughs> and with me, they're like, "Congratulations!" But are you going to have a C-section? Because uh, that's going to be hard work. But um, they were normal. They were yeah. normal when they came out. <laughs> they're massive now. Yeah. They are like I was saying. You know how you have to sort of start moving things up onto higher shelves as kids get older. I can now no longer reach the cleaning fluids <laughs> in my own home. <laughs> they're, they're outstripping me very quickly. Right. But so I have that all my friends' kids. Uh, you know, when they get to about nine or ten, like they graduate from having the marks on the door of how tall they are to when will it be that I overtake Lucy <laughs> to be a, a normal adult-sized human being. No. It's fine then. It's all right. I like having, so I have a lot of tall people on this podcast. So I always like it when it's small people who are smaller than me. It's you and Matthew Crosby so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I should have bred with Matthew Crosby. Uh, that would have been much better. I might see what he's up to what now. What terrible hobbit children those would be. <laughs> 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 well, Justin, when Justin did a programme called Fast and Loose, which was a sort of improv thing on BBC Two, and the guy who booked that... I don't even think he realised, but he booked um, Justin, Greg Davies, who's two inches taller than Justin, and Humphrey Carr, who is yeah. about sort of six six. And uh, I was like, this this producer's got a type. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it, but he's got a type. And I went to like the you know the rap party for that, and it was <laughs> like, okay. I don't mind. No, it's nice being little, isn't it? It's like, do you know what, actually? It works as a combination because he reaches all the high stuff. Yeah. And then I am the floor ninja, so I go for <laughs> anything that's kind of, you know, anything that's on the floor. It's like Jack Spratt and his wife, isn't it? Yeah. He can't reach anything in the middle. Because <laughs> he can't bend down and you can't reach Justin up. Edwards could reach no low and his <laughs> wife could reach no high. One day he picked up a thing and she had to sweep up a pie. Oh, that's good. That, no. it's, it's an instant classic. It is. <laughs> right, I want to talk to you about uh, the quiz shows that I always talk about. You've been on Pointless. Oh. Pointless Celebrities. It's my favourite. Do you know you were saying you want to be famous for yeah. the, who, who do you think you are? For me, it's quizzing yeah. is the thing that I now feel I, that that's the whole reason that I do stand up is so I can do quizzes. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, so I did pointless. I had a second bite at pointless oh, this you? series, which again, no spoilers. Yeah. But all I so last time I was on with Ed Byrne. Yeah. And we got to the final round of pointless, and we were defeated by John McCrurick and his wife, the booby. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, John McCreary, I've played poker with John McCreary as yes. well. I, uh, you know, I, we sort of, our paths keep crossing and I don't get to like him anymore any time <laughs> <laughs> I meet him. And, uh, and we got knocked out. So the question was about Top of the Pops house dancers. Right. And uh, the, so it was, you know, name Top of the, Top of the Pops dancing troops and they went for... I can't remember. Anyway, they went for one, and we had a choice, and Ed said, "Let's go for Legs and Co." Mistake. I know, and I was him. like, I, I was like, it feels wrong, but I don't know why it feels wrong. And of course, as everyone, you're all sitting there knowing Legs and Co. were, of course, an ITV dance troupe, uh, as seen on Kenny Everett and that sort of thing. Oh, that was hot gossip. Yeah. Oh, was that hot gossip? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, then that's how. That's no, it, that yeah. was the wrong. So I've yeah. now got it wrong again. Yeah. Okay. So he got it wrong, and then you got it wrong. He got it wrong, and then I've done that thing yeah. of going, yeah, whatever it was, it was wrong. But it's and so it's, uh, it, all of mine. I can't talk about the five. I've been on a third time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, if you go on four times without giving too much away and you don't win, <laughs> think, have, I, have I been on four <laughs> times or three times? I don't even know. How many. I've been on it so many times. I'm not going to say if I've won the last. <laughs> didn't win. Uh, and, you know, it gets to the point if I go on four times, that's just like the law of averages say you should win one <laughs> just by luck and the way it falls, it falls through. So, yes, that's well, this time But it's it always been the person I've been with's fault. Yeah, I know. But well, do you know this and I went time? I went with my wife this time, so that's. <gasps> Was it celebrity couples? It was. It was celebrity family. We got called up the day before the recording because um, uh, John Stapleton and uh, Lynn Fallswood had <laughs> pulled out. <laughs> That's where I am on the celebrity <laughs> ladder. 
hey, look, it's the day before, who will do it? <laughs> <laughs> and has a, has a fam. Has a fam. <laughs> That's very well. I was on with Rob Deering this time, oh, who yeah. is an amazing oh, quizzer. You won. Our pre show chat, we were so cocky, and I was talking about how I'd won Celebrity Mastermind. I don't yeah, like to right. talk about it, but I did. Yeah, and right. um, Rob had also just won Celebrity Mastermind. Yeah, all right. and, uh, <laughs> Have you done Celebrity Mastermind? I did do Celebrity oh, Mastermind. God. I got, like you did, I, didn't, you, I thought I'd broken the record. I got 35 points, uh -huh. and I didn't win. Oh. 35 points, one pass. How many passes did you have? Uh, one. Yeah. It was, uh, what was Steve Martin's character in The Simpsons? Ooh. I still uh, don't know. I still can't remember. No. Anyone know that? <coughs> Who? Ray Patterson. Ray Boom! Patterson. Wow. There you go. Well one. done. I know. You can be with me and Pointless next yeah. time. Because Rob, and again, without wishing to spoil it, if you can imagine, when you've done a pre-show chat about how amazing you both are at quizzing... <laughs> what would be the worst thing that could then happen? <laughs> <laughs> and that was what happened. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it was really humiliating. Yeah. And, uh, well, I've done point, uh, 15 to 1. Yeah, how would you get on there? Terrible. Okay. That's, um, a tough, that's a tough one. Yeah, I crumbled. You've done... Um, oh, go and tell me about that first. You crumbled. It was... Uh, it, Dave Gorman was one side of me, Frank Skinner was the other side of me, yeah. and I had been a bit cocky. And I'd lost no lives. Again, you see, I'm seeing the pattern is. <laughs> I'm a little bit full of myself is the yeah. problem. Because uh, then it, I got one question wrong and went absolutely to bits. Mm. And Gorman swept in. Yes, yeah. he saw the weakness. That's what he does. That's how he lives. His life. <laughs> yes, exactly. He was there waiting to pounce. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he and Frank Skinner were both brilliant. And then I just did um, the chase. Oh, I'd love to do the chase. Oh, it's brilliant. You've got to do it. It's yeah, so they won't good. have me on. Oh, they will. I won't. Eventually, someone will drop out. Okay. <laughs> Get on the phone to John Stapleton and say, listen, agree to do it and then do what we did the other time. Drop Wait, out the The one before. I want to be on. Have you been on this one? Tipping point. No. Celebrity, that's what I want to be on. I know. We can, only, we, we can all only dream of tipping point, Richard. I mean, you know, really there are some things that are beyond. I've the become um, even. I've been, always been obsessed with tipping point, but I've now started wondering about Ben Shepherd and the internal monologue he has. <laughs> I can't work out whether he's happy with what's going on or whether just in his mind he's going, why is this? Why do I have to keep coming in here to do this? <laughs> There's only so much you can say about some revolving discs falling off and some shots. And I think Ben Shepherd is a very bright, he you is. know, it's, it's funny, isn't it, when you meet those daytime people because they have to kind of conceal their intellectual prowess. Like Lorraine is one of the most brilliant women I have ever met. Yes. And I do, I, like, I long for the day that Lorraine retires, not because I, you know, I will be <laughs> devastated in so many ways, but um, because I think she's going to go rogue. I think she's going to absolutely kind of go. Because, you know, she got um, horoscopes banned from uh, GMTV. Oh, did she? Yeah, because yeah. she was like, it's all bullshit. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have them on the show. And I was like, okay, she's amazing. <laughs> she's very good. Tell you the one that um, I liked, and I don't even know if it's on anymore, was the one, it was called something like The Edge, and they had to bowl. So you answered the general knowledge questions yeah. and then you had to bowl a ball. Did anyone see that one? It was the most unbelievably <laughs> shit thing you've ever see seen. That. Because they'd have to say... So, you know, the general knowledge questions were fine. But then, so they bowled this ball and obviously, you know, it went up and up and up. But then if you went over the edge, you yeah, were done yeah. for. And um, they had to... I can't remember who that... Who was the host of that? Mark Benton. Thank you. Mark Benton. Mark Benton. <laughs> was it Mark Benton? It should have been anyway if it wasn't. Mark Benton. <laughs> um, but the, and they kind of had to say, so what's your tactics going to be? And of course, every time it was, I'm going to try and throw it just hard enough, <laughs> but not too hard. I love that. There are some presenting gigs that you yeah. do think, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have brought any passion to that. <laughs> <laughs> you were on Never Mind the Full Stops. Do you remember that? Oh my God. It's the grammar quiz with the Julian Fellows who wrote uh, <gasps> Downton Abbey later afterwards. Was that like for Sky or something? Yeah, it's for Sky and it was about punctuation. Were you on it as well? I was on as well. Okay. I hated it. I've talked about it so many times. <laughs> I just wondered if you had any stories about Julian Fellows I being literally a dick. cannot remember Good. doing it at all. <laughs> That's well, so bad. According to IMDB, you'd, you're on there. But, you I know. probably... I, I remember doing What the Dickens. Yes, I did that uh, as well. Sandy was yeah. hosting that, wasn't it? Yeah. Or Sue Perkins? Sa Sandy or Sue. I think yeah. they might have swapped over in... Uh, <laughs> the interchangeable lesbians <laughs> of television. <laughs> <They might have done. laughs> 
Good. Well, you've won a celebrity mastermind with 35 points, as anyone would expect. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> But you were bitter because you said they changed the rules or something, or they changed the timings. Or... They, uh, in my, I've said this stuff so much. In my Sorry. one, Sorry, I was I keeping just... count. I don't was, keep track. It was of me what versus doing. Hillary Kay from Antiques Roadshow. We did antiques as a special <laughs> subject, which is not allowed. <laughs> we got. She got one more than me. I got one wrong in the first, but she got mm. all of hers right, mm. and we got exactly the same second half. It's actually passed on two. So if I'd got one more point, I would have won. I was counting up. As she was going on to see, you know, and she got to 40, right? So I thought, oh, this is well, amazing, but she's won. And then they came down, and then they said, oh, there was a bit of a kerfuffle, and there was a bit of a pause as they were in the recording, and they waited. And then they came back, and they said, and Henry Kay got 36 points. So obviously, they had just kept recording, and the bloke whose one job is to fucking ring the buzzer <laughs> in two minutes forgot to ring the buzzer. Oh my god. And so whether they went back and really timed it properly to make sure that was in, because they would have had to do it at yeah. the end of a question when they put they couldn't have put it in because uh, well what's his face for about to say I've started so I've finished, wouldn't he? Yeah. And so oh, John Humphrey. So I think, you know, there's there's a lot I of controversial things in TV. <laughs> uh, this I think I was robbed of my celebrity mark. I didn't make a fuss at the time. They just didn't like you, did they? They That's didn't the like me. Though. And John, it was his name, John Humphreys. John Humphreys, yeah. He went, when she won, he went, I'm delighted you've won. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I punched him. We had a controversy on the chase, actually. There did was you? an answer that Jay Rayner disputed. And uh, it was very, it was really interesting because, you know, it's like... It's he wasn't even on the chase, he just <laughs> came in. <laughs> He's got a lot of time in his yeah. hands. But, um, no, because, you know, you don't really think what's going to happen. And, I mean, I personally wouldn't have had the balls to say, sorry, I think that's wrong. Yeah. But he did, and it was amazing. And they stopped the show, and the lawyer came down, and they kind of... It was, it was like, God, this is really... Yeah, this is yeah. sort of serious, serious yeah. stuff. It's a lot of money. You can do that in, you can do that in Mass and Mind. You can challenge, but they have to stop the thing. Yeah. Because my la if I got the my last question after I I relaxed after that I got I was really going fast home and I get a beep 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 on the and I did it was just beep, what beep beep I thought like, yeah I got an extra question <laughs> I got that question right I was I'd have won basically yeah and it was question what four letter word describes food that is of no nutritional value and I said fast food and it's junk. Food. Junk. Oh yeah. I mean, and I as see... I was, sat, I came in too fast. I had all the time in the world to stop and think about it. As I said, I knew it's sort of wrong, but I reckon I could have almost. Just, it, it wasn't. What I you should right. do is go on again and every single question yeah. dispute the question okay. and <laughs> just grind them down. I would never. I wouldn't go on again. It was so. I, I still dream about it. Really? Yeah. I, I had such a. I had a dream where I was on, on. It was all just in a muddy field. That it was all the chairs. And I had to walk <laughs> through mud to get to the... <laughs> That's you know, how much it affects me. Well, because the thing is, though, Rich, it, it's very different when you win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cause I would, do you know, because I did University Challenge and uh, I was on a team with... Um, it was a lovely woman called Christine Burns and uh, Jesse Armstrong, who writes Peep Show, and Judge Rinder. Oh, nice. off of the dancing now yeah. um, and we uh, so it, the way you do it so you go up to Manchester and or to Salford rather and you go to Salford and they record all of it in two days so we did our first round <clears throat> and um, and did very very well in the first round and then we and we were so kind of like oh we're all best mates everything's amazing because <laughs> obviously when you win you feel fantastic and we were all like ah oh, let's let's all stay in touch forever we're like best friends forever and then we lost <laughs> the next round and we all kind of went yeah all right bye see you later because we, <laughs> like we put, we were like whatever happens we're gonna go out and have dinner after the show we're just gonna you know we're gonna enjoy ourselves but then yeah when you win yeah. it is such a horrible crushing because yeah. I mean dying at a comedy gig is horrible but sort of losing a quiz is worse i think yeah <laughs> i'd rather win pointless than celebrity mastermind though would you yeah uh but you know <laughs> i shall i shall watch with interest i'm your next really good at i'm really good at pointless <laughs> and i'm annoyed because the older i get now my memory is starting I'm, my yeah, memory should be amazing yeah, i used yeah, to get yeah, everything yeah. and now yeah. Oh, and also, because now, any music after about 2000... Yeah. It's like when I listen to Popmaster in the morning, which I do every day. <laughs> and if any question starts, which 2012 album? I'm like, no, just no. Nothing. I've got yeah. nothing. 
and you just lose touch. That's the problem. You know everything up to a certain point, and then it's gone. It's a shame, isn't it? Mm. Then you die. <laughs> so have you seen? You die the... never having one celebrity <laughs> mastermind. Yeah. Or I've got no, no, fucking nothing. I'm the best at <laughs> trivia out of every so-called celebrity. If, if Jay Rain was a fucking celebrity, <laughs> how did he get on the chase and I didn't get on? <laughs> so anyway, you have you? Um, I'm, I'm fine about it. So is. <laughs> Um, have you seen the YouGov pages where they, you can find out what your fans are like? No. Uh, good. Uh, your fans... <laughs> your fans... Um, uh, this is uh, it's quite interesting. I think it kind of works on what they are different from other people's fans on. But um, your last time we had um, Sarah Millican on and her fans just like chocolate cake and mash. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for from my fans. Well, your uh, fans are... Well, your... Their fav the favourite food of your fans yeah. is lamb handy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and I don't... You know, I kind of... Do you know what's happened here is I've got one fan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so clearly that, isn't it? That lamb one handy, person's gone which on. I've never heard of. Second, scotch pie, which <laughs> sounds like something I've made up. <laughs> Third, Durango. It's just... Scotch pie is just heroin and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Third, Sorry, that's a regional Their third favourite food is Durango. <laughs> that's a movie, is isn't that? it? <laughs> I think that's a Quentin Tarantino film. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Their favourite uh, <laughs> sport is Formula One. <laughs> Big, like do you know, that's so hilarious. The only time I've ever had an argument with Leo Sayer yeah. was... <laughs> 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 I mean, you can all tell your stories in a minute, but mine. Um, I had been booked to be on, I think it was Talk Sport. And they, you know, I, d I was plugging a show and they said, will you go on Talk Sport? And they said, are there any sports that you're into? And I'm not at all. And they said, oh, you play poker a bit, don't you? So, yeah. So they said, oh, well, that will do. So I went on to talk about playing poker. And um, there was uh, the Formula One, some Formula One thing was going on. And they said to me at the end of my interview, they said, oh, so what do you think of Formula One? And I said, well, I just think it's a massive waste of petrol really you know I can't see the, but it's just all about who's got the best car it's not interesting and um, then we went to uh, an ad break and then came back and Leo Sayer who was at the Formula One thing who apparently is a massive fan of Formula One was incandescent <laughs> with rage and said I don't know who that woman you have on the show is but she's completely wrong and went on to <laughs> berate me for about 10 minutes about what a, a, an incredibly complex sport Formula One was wow. uh, I always liked him until yeah. Well, you, you riled him. When he's riled, he goes... He <laughs> I just pictured his hair. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> the top Facebook pages of your fans. Go on. Number one, H.G. Wells. Good. Number two, Richard Herring. <laughs> 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 They're just looking you up going, well, I know she won Celebrity Mastermind, <laughs> but I wonder... The third top Facebook page <laughs> is Windows. I don't know if that's <laughs> just Windows in general or the computer software. Still an odd thing, isn't it? The third. <laughs> we go, better go to the Windows Facebook page. Whichever Windows it is, it's fucking odd that they get, oh, I love that Windows. This but I'm not on your, on Twitter, I'm not in there. Tim, Dave Gorman, Tim Harford. Oh, yeah, yeah, Who's yeah. Who's Tim Harford? Tim Harford does uh, more or less on the BBC, doesn't he? Okay. That's Tim Harford, yeah. Um, I think he was on University Challenge, though, at the okay. same, in the same batch that I was. So. Faisal Islam? Yeah, in the same University Challenge. Okay. It's the people who like University Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Ince. And there Robin Ince, who I also shared a flat with in Edinburgh okay, before so your it's time. It's people are interested in who you've shared flats with <laughs> and where yes. you went to university. Um, I did a gig for you recently where you... Uh, well, quite recently, where you have... Um, Mothers and babies in the lunchtime called Screaming with Laughter. Are you still yeah. doing those? Uh, no, you killed it off. <laughs> that was it. We never did. Um, no, I've handed it on to Have a you? wonderful woman called Hattie Ashdown. Oh, yes. Because I, I just because right. my children are now four and six. Yeah. And I, the problem is I love babies too much, so I go along to those gigs and I will at some point steal a baby. <laughs> so uh, I didn't trust myself anymore to do it. It's a nice idea. As, an, as mm. a new parent, I kind of appreciate it. You have comedians. It's a lunchtime gig and you can bring your baby. Yes. <laughs> and then the comedians come on. But then it's, as a comedian, it's quite an odd it's really gig awful. to do <laughs> because there are lots of crying babies in the audience, which doesn't usually happen 
There's usually one crying baby in an audience. <laughs> Normally people cry and soil themselves. Yeah. You know, ha, ha, ha. It's, uh, it's but not what a good was thing, interesting but... is that it was, I think all, it was all women uh, comedians, uh, apart from me on mine, and then and the babies cried and all of them yes. and I came on and the babies all were quiet when yeah. I spoke. Yeah, daddy's home. Yeah. <laughs> and you may well have been the daddy. Who knows with you with your it reputation? Chis- it was in Chiswick. Uh, it's my, <laughs> it's my stomping ground. The yummy mummies. All the second kids are mine. <laughs> Well, it is a funny... It's, it's a nice thing. I started doing it when my babies were babies. Yeah. And it was just a way for me to get out of the house and see my mates. And I thought, oh, it'd be... An, it, it's more of a social enterprise than a, a comedy gig, really, because it's, you know, it's really nice when you are... Because normally you go to things like Baby Bounce and Rhyme Time and horrible swimming clubs where you have to stand there holding a baby in the shallow end getting really cold and yeah. baby massage where you grease up your baby and then it tries to get away from you and it's all you know <laughs> so uh, I thought it would be a really nice thing to do and it is it is a really nice thing but I think the main thing that it does is legitimise daytime drinking for yes. new parents <laughs> so they can be quite interesting audiences because also yeah. people are so, you know, you're not, when you first have a baby, you're absolutely nuts. Everybody is because you're sleep deprived. Yeah. It's a and it's it's normally first time parents who come, and so yeah, they're completely sort of insane and <laughs> laughing like. <laughs> 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 and you know, when people do dirty stuff, they absolutely love it because <laughs> you know, once you have a baby, you are completely desexualized. So it's kind of lovely when I always get young you know, like 20-something, the blokes, the really blokey blokes along, and it completely terrifies them because they have all these kind of new mums sort of uh, laughing but also kind of rubbing their legs slightly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. No, good. I'm going to ask you some of my... You were very good, by the way. Was I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. It was, um, it, was, it was tricky. You shouldn't have talked quite so much about post-childbirth genitals, maybe, <laughs> but... <laughs> I love the way you were saying how weird it is to meet someone when they've just come out of some genitals yeah. screaming. It's like, imagine meeting them when they've just come out of your genitals. I know. That's awkward. <laughs> it's a weird it'd situation. It would be more awkward if they come out of my genitals. <laughs> 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 some things have come out there. I mean, some living things have come out of there, but I just stamp on them now and make sure they don't. <laughs> Not making that mistake again. <laughs> They're very hardy, though. Hopes. You'll watch out for them. They're still... <laughs> Kick them down a drain and they're flourishing in the sewers. <laughs> That's will. the problem. <laughs> they find their way up. Uh, I'm going to ask you an emergency question. I wanna, I've been asking most people this. I've got a couple I definitely want to ask you, uh, but I definitely want to ask you um, uh, this one. Uh, if... Uh, what? I don't want to make sure I phrase it correctly. I think I can remember it. Oh, it do, actually, I don't have, oh yes. Take your if time. you had to do a human centipede with two other people, <laughs> you were in the middle... Okay. But you get to choose the person, the people who are attached at either end. Who would you attach to your mouth and anus? Okay. Okay, front, yeah. Kim Wilde. Okay, nice. Rear, Jeremy Clarkson. Okay. <laughs> I don't really want to elaborate any further. Okay. But, uh, Kim Wilde's a very good choice. I just, I love Kim Wilde. Yeah. I'd do anything with her. And she probably, she's a gardener now, and she? she's probably quite fresh produce. Yeah. So that wouldn't earthy, be so bad. but yeah. that's fine. Earthy well, you know, it's fine. everything's going to be earthy from where you're, from where you're crouching. <laughs> good, good answer. Um, have you ever met Brian Blessed? Uh, I've, no, I've met Robin Ince uh, Robin doing Ince. his oh, he does impression, impression many, many times. Uh, no, oh. I... Mm, no. There's no way. There's no way of spinning that if you haven't met him. Well, I was trying to think if there was any kind of, uh, you know, I could have been the baby that he bit the umbilical cord of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't even think that would work time-wise. My husband's a huge fan of Brian Blessed yeah, and can do a very good Brian Blessed right. impersonation with his massive lungs. Yes. But um, yeah, we we fall out over. Uh, he likes the film Flash. Yes. And it was only through discovering that he liked the film Flash that I discovered he liked the band Queen, <laughs> which has now become possibly the fault line in our marriage. Oh, really? that is I d- I'm, I'm talking about it in the tour that I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. I talk about how much I despise the band Queen. Wow. And it's, I know, it, it, I mean, this is... it is homophobia that's the main problem? Mainly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should be pretty happy, really. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> and I do feel it all like worked out well for you. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I don't. Do you know what? Actually, I've never thought about it, but I do prefer Brian May to Freddie Mercury, so do maybe you? that is yeah. a little. Uh, oh, was it Brian May and I? Well, because Justin's been in EastEnders, as has Brian May's oh, spouse. Yes, of course. We both got big hair. Yes. I'm fond of badgers. Yes. You know, I'd probably get on with Brian May. Yeah. Um, but I despise his music. What do you not like? The Queen's very catchy, isn't it? And yeah, that's the problem. The dead and it's just banal nonsense. <laughs> I just don't get me started because I, I will go into routine and yeah. I don't want to. I don't okay, want to sully that. the audience with that. <laughs> with me suddenly standing up and doing a bit of my show, but it's um, they come and see the show and oh, I will, will unleash do. my. What's the show called? It's called Consequences. Ah, yes, it mm. is. And you're on at the Soho Theatre. We think you'll be, by the time this goes out... It's in March sometime. Yeah, it should be all right. I think we should be all right. Down in the base, in a rival rival London theatre to this yeah. one. Yeah. It's all right, we're, we're allowed. They've got a... This one's bigger. It is. You're doing better. Thank you me. may not have won Celebrity Mastermind, but you are doing better. <laughs> Only with having you on my show, though. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I've managed to, get the, to fill the room. Uh, good. Well, it's a shame you haven't met Brian Blessed. That has let my afternoon down. I'll ask you this instead, see mm-hmm. if we get, can get out of it. Um, <laughs> I'll ask you first of all, have you ever seen a ghost? Oh, no. Oh. I think they're bollocks. Um, what do you go, ooh, like it was... <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got a great story about that. No. I did once... I once stayed in Jamie Theakston's house when he wasn't there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which he may be freaked out by. I had yeah. a friend who knew Jamie Theakston and we went to stay in his house and she had a dog with her and there was a room in Jamie Theakston's house that the dog wouldn't go into. Wow. And, uh, and it was kind of weird because it was like a lovely big old, you know, like I think Anne Boleyn had lived there at some point. Oh, it was a lovely old pile. And, um, and the dog was happily pottering around and there was this one door that the dog got to and it was like... Ah, 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 ah. And, um, and, you know, we were like, oh, we'll go and have a look. And we were sort of thinking it could be a ghost or it could be a sex dungeon. Yeah. We're not sure. <laughs> yeah, very easily. It was be. neither. It was neither. <laughs> I should say that. Do sperm have dreams? <laughs> Okay. Um, do. do they have aspirations and hopes? I mean, they must. They might. They've got something driving them on, haven't they? I mean, it, it's sort of weird, isn't it? When you think, probably sperm are like all of us, where you believe you are something, but you are just one of millions, and you're eventually swallowed up into something that you don't exactly. really understand. Oh yeah, so yeah. We're all sperm in a way, <laughs> aren't we? All sperm. I think we're all sperm, really. If you're you know, lucky, I had you get to, swallowed you know, up. You were talking about your. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were um, talking about your dream about Mastermind. I yeah. had a dream last night about doing this show, and I dreamed that we were doing a cookery item. Okay, we can do that. No, no, maybe we should. <laughs> we did, did it involve sperm? Because <laughs> <laughs> it did a lot when you stayed in the flat uh, with me. <laughs> Not that you knew about it. <laughs> How do you spell diarrhoea? D I A R R. H O E A. Fucking hell, that's good. <laughs> so, a round of applause for. I can never spell that. I have to look it up every single time. And I write it a lot more than you would think. <laughs> the good thing is, though, once you've got diarrhea, you've got gonorrhea. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, a, that's a handy thing in life, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm going to go back to. Oh, this is my question to find out you know, if you're a regular person or not. How much is a pint of bull semen? <laughs> I've got a fan who, who, who I don't say makes bull semen. I don't think he does that. But he, his job is to sell bull semen. So he could, he could answer that question for you, but I, I can't give you no. the correct answer. No. Uh, back to the proper questions. They were very sperm-based, and I apologise for that. <laughs> it was just the way, the, 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 it, the way it fell. Uh, so you've re- you're writing a sitcom for Radio 4. So you've written it. It's out. The it's fair. By the time this goes out, it yeah. would have been gone. The Fair Intellectual Club. Intellectual so you did this as a play in Edinburgh like two years ago? Yeah, I did a play in Edinburgh called The Fair Intellectual Club, which was based on the true story of a secret society of girls who, uh, sort of at the dawn of the Enlightenment in the early 18th century, they decided that they were watching their brothers studying all these exciting advances in science and maths and stuff, and they weren't getting to do any of it. So yeah. they had this little secret society where they all met up in each other's rooms, and they read up on some exciting topic, and then they'd all discuss it. Uh, in a little secret society but they got found out because one of them got a boyfriend Mm. and she told her boyfriend about the secret society and he blabbed to his mates so it's a lovely thing it's about sort of female intellectualism and uh, and about the enlightenment it's also about how you can never trust men (laughs) 
That's good. And so then that's so is the, is the sitcom the same as the player of you taking uh, the, the sitcom is like a really silly version of it. Right. I've never it was the first sitcom I've ever written, and right. I have to say, you know, I know you've done it, and it is so hard is. to. I mean, I think particularly hard uh, adapting something that was a play into six half hours of what I discovered was the characters had to kind of become a lot more broad and. Um, you know, and there is, you know, with the sitcom, you have to sort of reinvent it every week. And uh, I found, yeah, I found it really, 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 really difficult. And they pay so badly on the radio. So oh you have to my work very God! Hard. Do you know that is? I remember my um, auntie was saying, "Oh, you're doing really well. <laughs> we hear you on the radio all the time." And uh, and I, it's, it, I mean. This sounds awful because I know a lot of people do much harder things for much less money, but the the perception of how much you make for doing sort of radio stuff is, I think, very different to the reality. Because you do that even because you think about it, you realise how much you're being paid, and then you think about the really famous radio people, and you go like, you know, Nicholas Parsons lived in a skip, basically. <laughs> you know, it's um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's 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 in in a way excessively well paid for what it is, but at the same time, it really isn't. Yeah. <laughs> I've just I've got I've just real, I've got, I'm writing a four part sitcom and I've just been told how much I'm getting paid for it. Mm. I'm quite depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I especially thank God you've got if this. They, if they yeah. told me at the end, it would have been okay. But like, I've got to do it and then think. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think as well, it's because we are inherently lazy. Because as comedians, you know, you sort of you get into a certain lifestyle where you work very late but then you get up late and you're a bit sort of i mean i take the kids to school and go back to bed basically that is what <laughs> i do and um and so then when you have to make a real effort to do something yeah. you feel like well you should pay me a million pounds <laughs> because I think with a sitcom it takes so long if you're going to do it properly it takes so long yeah. like it takes a year really mm. so that's what you know i think to mm. create the characters and then the situations and then write it sometimes you can do it really quickly but and it's also because it is the sort of culmination of usually years of yeah. trying to get it away because it's such a torturous process, even on radio. Yeah. You know, it's it's very rare. That, I mean, mine was one of the quickest transitions I've ever known for anything yeah, yeah. from stage to, to radio. But, yeah, it's, I mean, I should say also I'm not being ungrateful. You know, when you <laughs> sort of think, I, I really do want to work again. Um, so I am being ungrateful <laughs> and I don't want to work again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I'm very excited about it. Um, <laughs> I don't, do, you know, I don't do this job for money. Thank God. Uh, as I say. think because you know there was all that stuff about transparency of pay at the BBC, yeah. and you know, obviously the people who are being paid a lot of money are very anxious about it. Whereas people like me, we're like, please tell everyone how much we get paid, <laughs> because then people won't email me all the time telling me I'm shit. <laughs> because then you'll be like, oh my God, is that all you get? Okay, <laughs> fair enough then. You know. I wouldn't expect I'm to I'd be too embarrassed. I don't want people to know. I want the, them to pretend that I'm in the, <laughs> the higher bracket. Uh, is the, I read a thing, I don't know if this was you being just cheeky to an interviewer, that you claimed your dad wrote Mull of Kintai. Is that a true story? Or That's is that completely true. Is it? And I'm still waiting for the money from that. Okay. That's, my dad uh, used to work in a chemist shop in Croydon <laughs> and uh, Paul McCartney came in one day and yeah. my dad was singing a ditty. <laughs> And uh, and Paul McCartney took that melody yeah. and he turned it into Mull of Kintyre, which is one of the highest selling singles of all time. Right. And my dad has never seen a penny of that yeah. money. And he's uh, sadly died this year. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, not, you know, I mean, I kind of feel like we need to spread the word more. I've sort yeah. of gently been mentioning it and rolling it out. Yes. But I'm kind of hoping to start some kind of legal proceedings <laughs> by, by the end of the year. Do you think that's how Paul McCartney wrote all of his songs? Yeah. Just in yeah. listening to chemists singing? <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, you know, uh, legendarily, Scouse shopkeepers are very tuneful. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, that was the sort of big early catalogue. And then, you know, they went over to India. They didn't write much. That's true. Be and he just dreamt yesterday, he said. That's what Paul McCartney oh, said. Oh, I dreamt it. He just dreamt it. Oh, I dreamt it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's, some, there's a fishmonger somewhere yeah. who could tell a different tale. He's not even the real Paul McCartney. He's the real Paul McCartney died in 1963, <laughs> so it's... It's, that's why he has to copy the chemist. The real Paul McCartney wouldn't have done that. No. But the the, the Paul, yeah, fake Paul. He's desperate for ideas. Just check out his earlobes. That's what I'm saying. Do you just look at his earlobes? Because all of them were originally like my dad's. Mull of Kintyre was originally yeah. called Cough Medicine. <laughs> I'm making some linctus for you. And, you know, yeah. he ditched the lyrics and he just kept the melody. Yeah. And that's what all of the... Yesterday was originally called... Uh, 
Uh, what was it called? It Dover was. Soul. It was Dover Soul. It was a fish market. <laughs> I believe in Dover Soul. <laughs> Why actually... you swam away? I don't... Anyway. When he woke up, this yeah. is a true Paul McCartney story that many yeah. of you will know. He woke up with a tune and he made up lyrics, mm-hmm. which were scrambled eggs. Oh, baby, I love your legs. That was the original. Uh, that was the original lyrics to uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. That's just for fact fans who <laughs> may enjoy quizzes. That comes up on pointless. You'll be glad if you're in pointless that day. <laughs> do you, when you uh, watch stuff, do you think, oh, I must remember that for point if I'm ever on pointless again? Like Kevin Spacey's in a film called Heartburn is a very tiny part, and I've learned that in case I get the films of Kevin Spacey. It's things like the uh, sizes of champagne bottles. Yeah. Uh, I did. I had for a time next to the toilet all the American states and their capitals oh, yeah, yeah. that side, and then all the British kings and queens that side. Right. And every time I had occasion to linger on the toilet, yeah. I would kind of look at it, and it didn't go in. No. I just tried I to think learn I was it. concentrating too hard on I the tried to. I tried to practice. I tried to learn stuff on, in the cab on the way to Pointless, which is yeah, the most pointless yeah. thing you can do. Because <laughs> yeah. you start quizzing yourself. Like I like um, Paul Simon. I know so much about Paul Simon. And then you start... And uh, Kurt Vonnegut. I know so much about Paul... Yeah. Kurt, and in the cab then I was thinking, so what would you say if it was Kurt Vonnegut? And I couldn't think of a single Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to go, I better learn all the Kurt Vonnegut... Yeah. Titles, because that'd be embarrassing. Because I, I'm a fan of his, but I can't, and and somebody Paul Simon, I couldn't remember anything. So I had to check them, and it's kind of that's a pointless thing to try and try, try and revise for pointless. The whole of human knowledge. Yeah. Of well, all like time, in yeah. an hour on the way there. Yeah. Anyway, people aren't as interested in pointless as you and I. No. So uh, you were also in uh, an Edinburgh play of uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Christian Slayer and Davy Johns. I know who is now, now. the Oscar-winning Davy Johns. Yeah. Because uh, he had so Dave Johns is a brilliant comedian who has had this incredible break. He's in Ken Loach's I Am Daniel Blake as Daniel Blake, and uh, it's you know because in one Flo- he, he is a brilliant actor as well. But I mean in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he and I had the two smallest parts. Right. So I had two lines. And he had one line, which was, fuck them all. <laughs> and that was literally all he said for two hours in the, uh, in the play. So, it's, yeah, it's amazing. But that, was that could have been you who went on to be Daniel Blake. I know. Well, I'm hoping Ken Loach will cast... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll look around next time. And I was playing a tiny nurse. <laughs> and how, what was Christian Slater like as to, to work with? That was, that was kind of an odd juxtaposition of him suddenly appearing in the Edinburgh Fringe. Well, because at that time, because Edinburgh now, lots of people come and do plays and they have big names yeah. in plays, but he was like the the first, really, that kind of the first sort of big Hollywood guy who'd said, I'll come over and do it. And I mean, it was just brilliant watching the complete culture shift for him from Hollywood, from LA, from being treated like a celebrity, to going to Edinburgh, where many, many Glaswegians would call him a cunt on a regular basis, <laughs> <laughs> in a nice way, but they'd go, hey, a cunt, and he'd be like, oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, no, he was, he was like a puppet. It was like having this crazy little puppy. Uh, it was so excited, because of course, you know, the thing about LA is it is very glamorous, but it's, it's not very much fun mm. a lot of the time they don't tend to drink in the same way that we do they don't so yeah he had an amazing time and we all <laughs> dicked about it was like being at university because yeah. we there was um 15 of us in the cast and it was mostly comedians and we all i mean i had two lines and so i did very little work every night <laughs> but then I, we used to go out to clubs every night and be and you'd be treated amazingly because they were all very excited to have christian slater in the room so they would bring out bottles of champagne very much like the pains are enjoying tonight the <laughs> bottles of champagne and you know and it would be amazing and then christian slater would go home and then immediately the shutters would come down <laughs> and they'd go right no more champagne for you now that's <laughs> it you're you're just no marks but it was yeah it was really good do you still chat with christian slater on Phone at We've lost touch. Have you? That's a shame. We've lost touch. Talking of the pains, do you have a Matthew Payne? Would you like to ask Lucy Porter a question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What would you like to ask? Don't no. make it a good one. I'll try. Don't make. Don't make, Don't be rude. <laughs> which is, and I want to hear your reasoning. Oh. Which is best? Have mm. I got news for you or the news quiz? Which Ooh, is best? That's which is best very... with reasoning? Have I got news for you or the news quiz? Do you know what? Because before, when we were talking in the dressing room, I said, if yeah. you're going to ask me a question, just make it really flattering. Make it like, how do you manage to be so clever and so beautiful at the same time? <laughs> but what you've done there is you've gone for... what? It's a subtle... It's like, yeah, yeah I have done both. 
<laughs> That's, I like that. They've kind of yeah. bigged me up without it being noticeable if I hadn't just explained it to everyone. Um, I, uh, well, do you know, my, my first love is radio yeah. because for all that we've said about how terribly badly paid it is, it is just so relaxed. I mean, it's kind of like this, where you just—it's—it's it's relaxing. You're having a chat. Um, and yeah, ask about what, what, who you'd have attached to your anus. Exactly, um, that's exactly. exactly that's what I live for. That's yeah. the kind of stuff <laughs> that makes me get out of bed in the morning, um, thinking about sucking on Kim Wilde's anus. I mean, yeah. that's kind of what it's all about for me, showbiz. So, um, uh, but yeah, no, the news quiz is. I tell you what, the news quiz is very good for. It's because you are in so the live recording there's it's radio four audience and all you have to say is michael michael goes to shit and they're like oh hey well done you <laughs> um and and loads of it gets cut out and you can say incredible i mean some of the things like that jeremy hardy says that don't make the broadcast are phenomenally funny <coughs> and uh, you know it's just such a nice recording process and miles jupp yeah. is a and sandy toxvig and Miles Jupp are amazing. Whereas with uh, Have I Got News For You, you never know who you're going to get. Okay. I had Anne Widdicombe once. And that was tough. That was, you know, because I always think, I've always been very much a girl's girl and, that, you know, like, well, you know, there's always some point of commonality with most women you ever meet. You know, it's just one of those things. And um, Anne Widdicombe, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we just, uh, I just couldn't connect to her. Because she's one of those women who I think... And understandably, and I do feel, I feel absolutely she, whatever you think of her politics, and I think they're horrific, but <laughs> she, she did, you know, sh she was a pioneer and she was a groundbreaking woman in politics. But I think some women then get that thing of, well, I, you know, it was, I, I did it the hard way, so why shouldn't everyone else? And she's always the first person to defend sexists and misogynists. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I just put up with it. And I think, oh, Anne come and live with me for a while and I'll soften you and kind of make you realise there is another way. That's what way. I think of Anne would come as well. I want yeah. <laughs> She's on my celebrity shag list, Anne would come. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a, you know, to add a little bit a of... A challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. And a, <laughs> add a little bit of a surprise. Who else, who else is uh, on it the keeps, it's, it's ever changing. Uh, Rebecca from uh, uh, Let's Play. <laughs> Uh, it's now yeah. mainly it's CB. Good. I'm glad some other it's, people know her because she it's, is lovely. It's she mainly is lovely. CBeebies based. Yeah. Now. It used to be kind of science fiction based, and now it's, it's I know Fenella from Furchester Hotel, who <laughs> I met. I went to the Furchester Hotel because I wrote about them, <laughs> and so I was invited there. And the lady who uh, there's a, it's actually a puppet. I didn't know, but it's the lady. <laughs> the lady who operates it was quite was we really quite fruity with me. Was she? And she met <laughs> in in front of my wife, who was also there. So well, was, a Furchester never yeah. gives up. Of course. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and she was making the puppet nibble my ear and stuff. It Ooh. was yeah, quite nice. It's very good. So uh, <laughs> I haven't got. I don't think I've got any puppets on my no, list. No, I might. I might. Well, well like you, them. I've had experiences with puppets that have changed my. <laughs> uh, you know, I've altered my perspective. <laughs> so it's different for you. And uh, don't know. I liked uh, Amy Pond, the character of Amy Pond, but not the actress who plays. <laughs> Have you, who's on yours? Have you got? Are you allowed to? Are you allowed to? I don't really have one no. to be honest. I mean, I, I. It's a weird. I think it's a really weird thing when people have that. Kind yeah. Of, or because you know the thing is you could. I mean you know you could meet like Leo Sayer might have yeah. been on mine. Yeah. And then I would then go, oh no, but I've met him and he, um, he, he's very angry about my feelings on Formula <laughs> One. So you know it's uh, no, I find it a weird concept. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, once you've been married for a bit and you're a bit older, it's just it's too much effort, isn't it? I know. I mean, yeah. God, it's I, I've, sort of being married. It's like it's like being a neutered animal, isn't it? You sort of <laughs> you kind of you take more interest in food and interiors really yeah. than uh, than that. Yeah, kind of just business. enjoy yourself while you're young and single. It's that's <laughs> no, but do because you don't mind. No. It's not like you're sort of thinking, oh, oh I wish I was, oh, I wish I was down. You know, get, okay, you do. All right, you do. <laughs> I wish I was 25 years old again. Is all. That's all I wish. I could have another little sweep through. Just for like how yeah, long, though? Let's have a go. For 25 years, and then I'll be 50 <laughs> again. And then I'll be, then I go, this time, <laughs> I'm happy to. It just, it's the irreversible nature of ageing that is the, that you don't really understand. Oh, but that's it the comfort. Imagine if it wasn't irreversible. Imagine if you were one of those jellyfish that can regress. 
yeah. it would be horrific because then you'd think, God, I might... Because you wouldn't do it any better the second time and you wouldn't sleep with better people and you wouldn't make better choices and you wouldn't be a better person. You would be the I'm same happy disappointing... Be the same. I'm, happy the same. I'm happy to do it the same. <laughs> and just be young again for a bit. It's just, you know, I'm 50 next year. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, you've always people been... People are amazed, they can't believe it because you hear that... Come, like, that can't be true. Yeah, that can't be true. He looks, so, he looks like he's 25. <laughs> he's so immature. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you are, you will always be simultaneously 80 and 12. You're just one of those people, you know. It's, uh, that's our lot in life. Oh dear, it's lovely to see you. I don't, I think we might have that to. That was a slightly depressing we end. Might have to, uh, <laughs> we might have to, I'm, I'm seeing if there's any way out of, uh, of this. No, I think let's just, just got, let it peter just out got, talking about I'm, death. All I'm seeing is giant husband. That's all I can see on the <laughs> giant, giant, ask her about a giant husband. <laughs> Let's see what. Well, let's see if I can do. Oh, let's. I'll ask you this uh, <laughs> series of questions. We'll see what we get out of this. Okay. Um, what is the most impressive celebrity that ever came to visit your school when you were at school? Did any famous person? It was Alan Beath, MP wow. of the Lib Dems. And you knew straight away. And yeah. it was Alan. And it was. Oh, I know this. It was Alan <laughs> Beath. I was very taken with him. Yeah, he came to talk in, you know, and I was in the sixth form as well. We'd never had a celebrity in before. And I mean, he looks like a pasty. He's like sort of this kind of slightly. Um, but I was, you know, it was my first taste of, oh, celebrity does something to people. Because he spoke and he was very passionate and he, you know, talked about politics. And I, you know, I was a, a kind of Lib Dem. I mean, you know, never mind Clegg mania. <laughs> I had beef, beef frenzy uh, for a while. Um, did any other future, apart from yourself, did any other future celebrities go to school with you? Um, at the same time as me, no. <laughs> but uh, Jan Leeming went to my school. Wow. I know. Um, so, yeah, that was all we needed, really. Me yeah, and Jan Leeming, I think that will do. They can shut the school now. They can. That's They're done. Impressive. Did the siblings of any celebrities <laughs> <laughs> teach at your school? Have you got a story about yeah. this? Okay. No, I've told her earlier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rick Buckler from the Jams uh, brother taught art at our school. That's very Nick. good. He was called Mr. Buckler. Mr. Buckler. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Um, we had my friend Joe Nove was yeah. the niece of Charles Nove. He okay. used to do the nighttime show on BBC Radio 2. <laughs> right, okay. That's not what I asked. <laughs> I mean, even if it had been, it would still have been a poor example. <laughs> Have you ever seen a famous TV animal in real life? <laughs> <laughs> You'd think you'd know that straight. Alan Beath straight away. <laughs> yeah, open. Oh, yeah, yeah, I met Goldie from... I just, the thing, I'm going to walk away, and I'm get, when Peter's on later, I'm going to run back onto the you stage. Can, you can tell come you. back on Because I bet I will have done. I bet I okay. will have done. Um, I'll ask you one more question. Let's hope it's... Let's hope it's a good one. Let's not build it up too no, I'm much. Gonna, I'm going to try, try and find a new one. I mean, to be honest, what do you think has the best question been so far? <laughs> 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 Let's just work from that. The and how to spell it. diarrhea was a, hi a highlight for me. Do you know what? I might actually... Uh, I, I will clip that. Yeah. And, and put that somewhere okay. prominent on my website. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the one. Are you ready? Yeah. Have you ever met a shepherd? <laughs> Do you know, of all the questions you could have asked, yeah. I, I was thrown out of a sheep shearing display. <laughs> That's hilarious, You're yeah. You thrown out of a sheep shearing school? I got thrown out of a... Um, we went to, you know, those <laughs> sort of country farms yeah. that they have, those farm parks, and um, I got in an, into an altercation with the shepherd who was doing the sheep shearing yeah. display, and I got escorted out of wow. the... Um, what was the altercation <laughs> in regard? What did you do? How he, old were you when you did this? No, this was, like, last year. Right, okay. This <laughs> was... <laughs> What, this what, is terrifying. What reason. form did the altercation take? So you yeah, shit at sheep shearing. <laughs> no, he was a very good shearer. Okay. He was a very good shearer because I, like, I mean, I go to a lot of these country farm parks, and there's always it's either falconry or sheep shearing, okay. and I'm now an expert in both. And um, and this the sheep shearer came out, and he was a new one because I've seen you know most yeah. of the ones who are currently working on the UK circuit, <laughs> and um, and he came out and he had this. Uh, this lovely looking sheep, yeah. 
lovely sheep okay. and he was just really because you know often they do like a joke for the mums and dads like they'll come out and I don't do really it. know no I don't, <laughs> don't really know much about have you not been no, when not Phoebe's been. a bit older you okay. will go you will go to these things and they okay. do because they, they, they you know they want to make it a bit interesting for the mums and dads yeah. and so they normally do a kind of you know, hey guys, what do you call a Welshman with a sheep under each arm, a pimp, or you yeah. know, what, uh, did you hear in New Zealand they've just found two brand new uses for sheep, meat and wool, right? Yeah. Ah. Um, but so, <laughs> you know, classic, your classic sheep shagging gags. But I this... just fucked this sheep, that's what I did. I, I just fucked this sheep. <laughs> well, that's what he did. That was it. He what? was the Richard Herring of sheep shearing. <laughs> He went, oh, yeah, this is a this little lady. Oh, she's a bit of a wriggler. Oh, oh not like my ex-wife. Oh, no, I'm going to have to force her head down now. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, wow. force her head down. Yeah, not the first time I've done that, eh, guys? Oh, and then he said the worst one was, because we was talking, like, they always do a bit of lanolin chat where they tell you about lanolin. Did the men, when he said that not, not the first time I've done that, guys go, well, not with a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it was, it was such a weird... Because like everyone was a bit oh, and then he did, he said he said oh yeah this is a lady she's got lanolin and lanolin's a kind of grease which means she comes with her own lubrication. <laughs> and I, 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 so anyway, so I I know and there's a yeah. rule in comedy where you never heckle another comedian. But yeah. I'm looking at this guy thinking well he's a shepherd. I don't yeah, know <laughs> if the same rules of professional courtesy still apply. Yeah. So I did I I heckle, well I didn't heckle him I tutted but I tutted very loudly. <laughs> and I then went, you were thrown out. And then the you sheep. Got me, People, the yeah. security, the sheep security. Well, a, a youth in a T-shirt, <laughs> let's not be... Uh, it doesn't take much security wow. to get me out of a building, as you can imagine. But, yeah, they, um, they said, I'm sorry, madam, could you... Uh, you're, you're upsetting the, uh, the sheep shearer, could you leave? And I had to just With your tut. Out. Yeah. Don't come here and tut at our sheep shearer. And he was, I was like, he's the one who's, who's, you know, talking about bestiality. And <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's a different world. It's a different world. The shepherd world is a different. I know. Well, they're, they're very, you know, they're very rough and ready in the shepherd world, aren't they? They're. Uh... Well, there you go. Who'd have thought that would lead to such a? I know. Good, uh, <laughs> such a good answer. Uh, good. Well, uh, it's been really lovely to talk to you. Go and see Lucy uh, on tour. Uh, whenever she's on, she's on tour all the time. Aren't I you? am. Yeah. New I'm show every working. year. You doing the Edinburgh Fringe 2017? Yeah. See you at the Edinburgh Fringe 2017. Well, I may also be for a first time in two years. Yeah. We I won't be sharing a flat this time, we though, will we? Won't. Because I'm not going to mix our children together. That okay. would be. In fact, we could put them in a flat. Yeah. And then we could live somewhere else. That'd you mean nice. just in case? That was, it was genuinely. I, I didn't like going to Edinburgh very much, and it was that those three or four years. We all. That was just the best time. We I did had have fun. Didn't it was. We? A, it was a really good. We house. did have a lot of fun. Ah, I wish you could go back, but you can't go back. No. <laughs> that was. We were only like early, late thirties then. I was. That would have been fine. No, but now we're on the inexorable march towards death, aren't yeah, we, Richard? Never mind. So that's. Uh, I will probably be, that will probably have killed me by the time this I goes know, out. So that is. We'll think we laughed at yeah. the time, and it was. That was. That yeah. was it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, massive round of applause for my guest, Lucy Porter. <laughs> Beautiful Lucy Porter. Thank you very much. See you. See you next week. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>